Right, we're on. So I've just given a lesson to someone and they've just changed their path from seven degrees to the left to an in to out path of two to three degrees. Unbelievable. They've just gone from slicing the golf ball to hitting a draw. Club head speed is up. Ball speed has gone up from about 80 miles an hour to over 120. Ball speed has increased by 20 miles an hour. Club head speed increased by 10 miles an hour. So you need two canes, one swing plate and some golf balls. Oh, and a golf club, that'll help. <laughs> Okay, as always, before we start, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're a current subscriber, welcome. Now's your chance to subscribe, just click that button, click the bell notification for instant notifications. And of course, the thumbs up button, please click that, that is so important. Also check out my website, eurekagolfswing.com. There's broadcasts on there. You can get online coaching from me there. You can book in-person coaching with me. The Eureka Golf Swing Method is my golf swing method. Open stance gets the body turning through, flat left wrist compression, reduces the slice, which is what this video is about today. Let's move on. So I just gave a chap called Steve a lesson. What a great name. He, um, path six degrees left. Sorry, nine degrees left with the face six degrees open to the path was his average before. And of course, he's going to tail that ball off to the right every time. Steve is very new to the game of golf. He's started golfing this year. Um, so I, I thought to change paths is going to be hard work. We talked about trackman numbers. We explained how this all works. Um, it was quite technical. And then we broke it all down into three simple moves. So there's three moves in here. We'll start off with move one. There's or three actions you have to do. We'll start off with move one, how to we can change path from out to in, to in to out, to hit draw shots from a slice. So first of all, I put the swing plate in place. I place the cane in the swing plate. So now the golf ball is just underneath the cane. The golf ball is just underneath the cane and of course it's a great visual for Steve when he took the club back up and he came down he could see he was going to hit the cane because of his out to in path. He was standing close to the golf ball, up here, out to in and then when he came through his left elbow appeared first instead of club head appearing first behind his back. So just by putting the cane in there gave him a visual picture of where the path of the golf club has to go. He generally or basically has to swing underneath the cane to move path from out to in to in to out. Very effective drill, but such a good visual as well. So Steve took his setup, stood a little bit further away from the golf ball. I explained that there's forces in the golf swing, your body being the center of rotation. So body being center of rotation, that club head wants to get away from the body. So let that happen. If he's standing too close to the golf ball and comes down, he, he's the inertia that club wants to throw out here. That club wants to get thrown out to golf ball, but he's pulling it in because he's standing too close. So he moved away from the golf ball, then just hit a couple of shots. So he hit a few shots going under the cane. And he hit them okay. They weren't great, but they were okay. But he got a couple of heavy ones. So the second part we thought, okay, well, low point control is obviously an issue. We can change path. His first shot from under the cane, he actually hit right to left. So his first shot had a right to left ball flight, so he got a draw, which he was he was amazed by. But then immediately after that, performance dipped because strike changed because his path had moved so much. So we had to work on centeredness. I took a second cane and lay it on the ground underneath the centre of his body and asked him to stay centred to that cane. So we took this cane, lay it down, golf ball in line. We were using eight iron for the drill. Golf ball in line with the cane, and then on the backswing, so effectively if it's that cane, on the backswing stay centred, navel towards the cane, there, and then from there we had to move left of the cane to start the downswing. So centred to the cane, and then left, and then start downswing. Strike improved. There, centred to the cane, move left, and then start downswing. So there, to there and then start downswing. It's good. Again, draw right to left flight. So now strike became better. Okay, so control of low point was there because of this cane. Control of path because of the cane in the swing plate became better. However, at times strike deteriorated a lot less though but strike did deteriorate because it was such a strange move or a different action. Steve had never felt the club traveling into out. 
he never felt his weight move towards target. Everything was back foot and out to in. So of course, he would get a really, really good shot, then a very poor one. Really, really good, really, really good. Poor, poor, poor. There was nothing in between. And the cause of that was just understanding how the club released. So he was still prone to bringing this left elbow into play. So even though the path was in to out and he was moving ahead, he was still trying to get that elbow in there, which was his old motion. So he had to understand release. Now, as such a new golfer to the game, to explain trap man numbers, to explain path, to explain face to path, and then going to release was just, that's too much information. So again, we had to break it down and make it simple. And I told him, as Fred Schumacher does in his book, to throw the golf club towards your intended target. The dress position was taken, centered to the cane on the ground. The cane on the swing plate controls the path. This cane on the ground controls where the weight's going to be, so controls low point. Move ahead, and then from here, the club gets thrown out towards the golf ball. Remember, the club wants to swing away from the centre of rotation. Centre of rotation, arms and club get thrown away from the centre of rotation. And I explained to him, you have to let that happen. Let that get thrown towards its intended target. Do not be the inertia. So that there is what we're after, letting the club go away from the centre of rotation. Do not pull it in, because you can see how that's going to conflict strike or create a poor strike. So all of a sudden Steve sets himself up, centered to the cane for low point, under the cane on the swing plate for path, and then throw the club out towards the golf ball or let it naturally get thrown out. But it's getting thrown out towards the intended target. So through the ball to the target. So through the ball and to the target. So now strike got better. But strike got a lot better. That's when he carried 147 yards with his 8 iron. He was carrying about 1.9 before. So a huge difference. Because he's now much more free. And he's getting that into out path. I'm starting that a little bit too far left. He's got his into out path. He's got his low point control. He's got his re release. That was good. And he's now hitting draws and carrying it a lot further. However... <laughs> One more thing kicked in. He was doing really well, starting to get good shot, good shot, good shot. Semi poor shot, good shot, good shot. And his bad one became 120 yards. So his bad shot was still 15 yards or so, 10 yards further through the air than his previous bad ones. But then something creeped in. He tried too hard. He started to throw the golf club because he was now feeling release. And when he came through here, the club head was appearing behind the back before the left elbow, which is brilliant. But he overdid it, he started to throw the golf club. Centeredness was good, low point was good. Path was good underneath, path out to the right, unbelievable. But then he started to throw the golf club towards the golf ball instead of the target. So he threw the golf club towards the golf ball here in an effort to try and get the club to appear first. And of course he got a bit of a that going on because he was using the golf ball, classing the golf ball as target. Now we know, I'm sure you've seen in my videos before, and Eureka Golf Swing, we know that the target is away up there somewhere. So I'm throwing my golf club to that, not to the golf ball. The golf ball is just a hologram. So we explained that, we took practice swing, golf ball is a hologram swing, and through the hologram, club gets thrown towards intended target, perfect release. Then he kind of understood, and he got a little bit more consistency, Although it was very good before that, to be fair. He was, he really grabbed it well. It was there. There. It's very, very good. Trying to feel as though that club gets thrown towards intended target. So the three things were simple for him. The cane on the ground controlled low point. The cane in the swing plate controlled path. And then the release was throwing the golf club towards intended target. But throwing it through the hologram, not at the golf ball. So a quick reminder, what is the hologram? It's the ball. The ball is just a hologram. No compensation made for impact. None. Low point, path, release through hologram. Right to left flight, path into out, an unbelievable result. There we go, next time you're on the course, get yourself a swing plate. Get a swing plate, get that in there and work on your path. If you're out to end, use a swing plate. Even just that massive, you might not move off and on the golf ball, so your low point may be okay. You may release the golf club pretty well. If you're out to end, I'm sure your release is a little bit funky. 
Um, but get a swing plate, work on that. <laughs>